Hey, I want to share something really cool with you guys. Check this out. That's right. This is CPM running on a VGA monitor. Now, nothing really you know special about this, right? I mean, this could be any number of computers hooked up to this monitor. Well, take a look at what's driving it. Yep, it's a Tandy Model 100 laptop from the Stone Age. How did I do it? Well, stick around and find out, because today I'm going to show you how I hooked up my VGA monitor to my Tandy Model 100. Believe it or not, the Model 100 actually supported an external 80 column display back in the early 80s. Now, this might be a little surprising if you've only ever used your Model 100 in laptop mode on the small built-in 40 column by eight line display. But Tandy actually sold an expansion device called the Disk Video Interface. Now, as the name implies, this device would hook up to your Model 100 to provide both a five and a quarter inch disk drive and an external monitor. In fact, Tandy even provided an extended version of BASIC with the DVI, which could take advantage of the disk drive and the larger display. Now, if you're not fortunate enough to own a Tandy DVI, or maybe you just don't have the space because, I mean, the thing was monstrous, then don't worry because there's actually a better and more modern approach to connecting your Tandy Model 100 to an external display. In my last video in the Model 100, I talked about how the community of Tandy enthusiasts have taken on all sorts of interesting projects. Steve Adolf, the guy who brought us the Rec CPM chip that I covered in my previous video, also brought us a modern external video adapter. He calls it the MVT100. Now, this device is more than just an external display for the Model 100. It's actually a full VT100 terminal. It was originally designed by a guy named Jeff Graham. You can go over to Jeff's website to check out the design and learn more about how this device works. Steve Adolf made some minor design tweaks to Jeff's board to add an RS-232 port, as well as some firmware improvements so it would work well with the Model 100. Steve offers this revised board as a kit. So if you want one, and believe me, if you're a Model 100 fan, you're going to want one. But if you want one, you can order it from the Model 100 wiki, which I've linked to in the description. And of course, I bought one of these kits from Steve myself. So let's go ahead and put it together. Assembly of this device isn't really that hard. There's a decent amount of components and connectors, but they're all through hole parts and relatively easy to work with. Now, another Steve in the Model 100 community named Steve Baker took the time to write up a detailed PDF that walks you through the entire assembly from start to finish. So if you tackle this project yourself, you're gonna to wanna to download Steve's PDF and use it along the way. Okay, well, let's go ahead and dig in and do this build.
Okay, now before we plug this thing into the Model 100, we need to check the configuration. Remember that this device is a standalone VT100 terminal, so you should be able to just plug in a monitor, keyboard, and power and verify that it's working. Once it's powered up, you should see some initialization text. Press Shift and F12 on the keyboard and you'll be taken to a configuration screen. Here, you want to make sure that the option to invert the serial connection is enabled. And you also want to make sure that the baud rate is set to 19,200. Then, press K to save the configuration changes and restart the device. Now comes the fun part, connecting it to the Tandy Model 100. But before we can plug in the cable, we have to transfer the driver file over to the Model 100. Now, this is gonna be a little bit tricky because the driver file is a .co file. And what that really means is we need to jump through a couple of hoops in order to get it transferred. Now, I'm gonna walk you through what I think is the easiest way to do this, which is using a tool called MCOM. So the first thing to do is to go ahead and download a copy of MCOM and walk through the installer. You'll then need to connect your Model 100 to your computer with a serial cable. I'm using a 25-pin RS-232 cable with a USB adapter, and I put the links to both the cable and the USB adapter that I'm using in this video's description. Turn on the Model 100 and go into BASIC. Once there, you'll use this command to tell it to run the file that it receives over the serial port. Now your Model 100 is waiting to receive the file. Now go back to your PC and open the MCOM application. Select the COM port that your Model 100 is connected to, and then click the big button at the bottom which says inject DOS into a laptop without a TPDD client. Select Teeny 100 and then click OK. After the transfer is done, the Model 100 will install the Teeny program in the menu. Go to the menu and run the Teeny program. Next, go back to MCOM and select the Start Service button. MCOM will now appear as a Tandy portable disk drive to the Model 100, and any files in the data folder will be accessible to it. So now you want to transfer the VT100 driver. Download the driver from the VT100 page in the Model 100 wiki, and extract the VT100.co file into MCOM's data folder. Then go back to the Model 100 and run this command inside of Teeny to copy the VT100.co file. Make sure you include the space before the .co or the file transfer will fail. Then press Q to quit out of Teeny. Go into BASIC and run the clear command to make sure that memory is freed up for the VT100 driver. And finally, go back to the menu and run VT100.co. Okay, now the driver's loaded and we should be able to just go ahead and use the display. So let's first plug the MVT100 device into the Tandy Model 100. We should then be able to drop into BASIC and set the display to the VGA monitor by typing screen space one. And there we go. We're now using BASIC on the VGA display. Notice that we have a full 80 column display available here and 24 lines of text. Another neat trick is you can type in screen space one comma one, and it'll display the menu labels at the bottom of the external display, just like you get on the built-in display. And to remove it, you can type screen space one comma zero. Okay, let's do something else interesting here. A couple months ago, I made a video where I walked through the installation and setup of the CPM operating system on a Model 100. The chip that I used for that is called the REC CPM, 
And as I mentioned earlier, it's made by the same person that made this MBT100 device. So it's no surprise then that the Rec CPM has support for the MVT100 built in. Now let's go ahead and activate it and see how it looks. Okay, I have here my other Model 100, which has the Rec CPM installed, and I plugged it into the MVT100. Now to launch CPM on this device, you press Control C. And now you can see that I've dropped into the CPM command prompt on the built-in display. When I press the label button, You'll notice that it says here that it's using the M100 for the display output. If I then press F3, you'll see that the option changes to RS-232. Hit the label button again, and now everything I type is displaying on the VGA monitor. Okay, let's fire up a game of Zort and try it out. The MVT100 works great for text-based adventure games, as well as many CPM applications. Some of the software, however, doesn't work quite as well. For example, if I try to run a game of Ladder, which is sort of like a Donkey Kong style CPM game, some of it comes across fine, but then we get some weird characters or escape sequences or something like that, and you can't really play the game. Now I'd say the usefulness of the CPM integration is really going to depend on what you want to do. For example, if you're using the Model 100 for writing, you can run vEdit on an 80 column display and have a great experience with it. But one thing you do get is Microsoft Basic. And when coupled with the 80 column display, you have tons of additional programs to run. All right, well, that's about it for today. Thank you for taking the time to hang out and watch how we got this external VGA monitor hooked up to my Tandy Model 100. Now, if this is a project that you wanna take on yourself, I've included links to the ordering information for the MVT 100 in the description below. Well, thanks for hanging out and watching this video. I certainly had a lot of fun making it. And as always, until next time, go make something cool.